Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight is the um, February regular meeting, February 11th, and uh, so nice to have real people here. So welcome to all of you. We'll start off with the um, roll call by the clerk. Chairman Lynch. Present. Councilor Backer. Present. Councilor Dill. Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Rowe. Here. Councilor Swift Kayata. Here. And uh, P Pledge of Allegiance. If I could ask everyone to uh, either turn off their cell phones or put them on vibrate. Um, we will go to the first item on our agenda, which is the minutes of our January 15th meeting. David? I move the approval of the minutes of our uh, previous meeting dated Tuesday, January 15, 2008. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing no oh, Sarah? Can I throw myself at the mercy of the court and have my name put back as if I were here because I was two minutes late? I'm working on my late problem. You notice I was 10 minutes early tonight. <laughs> Without objection. I looked at this and I was had a heart attack. I was like, I missed a meeting. No, the minutes do note that Councilor Lennon yeah, arrived at 7. in small print at the bottom <laughs> with an asterisk. Okay. I think uh, there's no objection to that. Thank you. So, uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Okay. It's a vote. 7-0. <clears throat> Next item on our agenda is reports and correspondence. Does anyone have anything to report? Jim. Uh, I attended the most recent meeting of the Sports Done Right Committee. Uh, they are moving forward with their uh, initiative to bring uh, Sports Done Right and make uh, Cape Elizabeth a Sports Done Right community. If I could take just a minute, I'd just those that are involved with Sports Done Right. Um, there are seven of them, and uh, the first one would be athletic participation must be healthful, positive, and safe for everyone involved, conducted in an environment that teaches values and ethics, strengthens the community, promotes competition without conflict, and enriches the lives of the athletes. Second core principle, learning and personal growth from the Foundation for Interscholastic and Intramural Sports. Next one, parents and community are actively involved in creating and supporting an environment that fosters positive athletic experiences for student athletes. The next one uh, pertains to coaching. The coach is the key to making the student athlete experience appropriate, positive, and educational. The next one is each uh, involves opportunity to play. Each student who meets the eligibility standards has the opportunity to participate and learn through sports. The next core principle is health and fitness. Participation in sports builds self-confidence while teaching good health and fitness habits to, the la to last a lifetime. And finally, leadership, policy, and organization. High-quality athletic programs are built upon a foundation of strong leadership, clear policy, adequate resources, and effective organization. Uh, we went through a self-evaluation process at our last meeting, which was quite interesting. Uh, they put me with a student group, which was equally as interesting. Uh, but uh, we, we found some areas where we were doing a very good job and other areas we need to work. Uh, the next step for the committee will be to bring it to the public. You'll, you'll be hearing about it in school. Uh, coaches will be hearing about it. Uh, community members, uh, youth sports groups will be hearing about it. So it's a, it's a vibrant group, and I look forward to great things. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else? Cynthia? I would just like to report that democracy was alive and well yesterday at the uh, Democratic Caucus, and thank our clerk for um, uh, <laughs> a, a good job registering all the new voters, and to thank all the Cape citizens who came out and participated. <laughs> We were in the New York Times. Did you see that? I did. I did. On page. Okay. Any further reports? No? Michael, your turn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I provided a odds and ends in writing, and uh, I don't think I need to elaborate it on any further, except to say that one of the items I updated was Spurwink Avenue and the fact that work, some work was uh, going to start there fairly soon, and the good news is that it actually began today. So. Uh, hopefully uh, that will, particularly as the weather gets better, we'll move right along. So thank you. Great. 
Um, at this point um, in our meeting, we ask for citizen comments for items that are not on our agenda. I trust that many of you are here for an item that is on our agenda, and we will um, be allowing comments at that point on the bleachers. But if you would like to speak uh, to us or with us about an item that is not on the agenda, now is an opportunity for you to do that. You also will have an opportunity at the close of our meeting as well. And seeing no one here to speak on items not on our agenda, we will move to the first item. And the first item is item 30-2008. That was a um, proposed donation which was tabled last month at the request of the donor. We have not heard back again from the donor, so it would be my recommendation that we have a motion to remove this item from the table and then a motion to indefinitely postpone this item. <coughs> Cynthia. I move that we take this item off the table. Second. All in favor? It's a vote, 7 0. Okay. Cynthia? I move that we indefinitely postpone this item. Second. And any, is that a debatable? That's not oh. debatable. Good. Okay. All in favor? 7 0. It's a vote. Okay. The second item is item 36. Ocean House Pizza Renewal of the Liquor License. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we renew the liquor license at the open o Ocean House Pizza. Second. Any discussion? I would just note that we have heard from the uh, police chief and that there has never been any problems there. And so this will take a vote. All in favor? 7-0. Okay. Next item, item 37, is a request for poll locations on Shore Road near Old Colony Lane. Um, living on Old Colony Lane, I'm very familiar with the location of this. And um, the notation on our agenda that these poll relocations are in conjunction with new residential building is in error. Um, these poll relocations. I learned after calling to Verizon and CMP are because um, the poles currently are not very well situated where they are. Uh, the concern that I have, first of all, it wasn't very clear where the pole locations were. And uh, I know you all heard from someone who lives along that area. I did confirm with the Verizon engineer today that these two pole relocations are north of the pond outlet, so they do not impact Mr. McDonough's property. However, um, I am still concerned that relocating poles to the other side of the street may interfere with a future proposal from the Shore Roads pathway. Committee. We don't know what side of the road the pathway committee may suggest a path. In expressing these concerns to the Verizon engineer today, he uh, told me that he believed that Verizon would be happy to pay for a subsequent relocation if we were to choose to have a pathway along there. So my suggestion would be that we move to grant the permit provided that the manager confirms that the poles are north of the pond outlet, and further provided that if the poles need to be relocated because of the future Shore Roads pathway, that Verizon or its corporate successor, I think because they're for sale to Fairpoint, and CMP would pay for any pole relocation. David? I'll second the motion as made by Madam Chairwoman. Okay. Discussion? Yeah. I have a question. Um, and I'm not sure how this works when we have polls, telephone polls relocated. Um, they committed to you, the Verizon folks committed to you, that yes, they would pay for this? I mean, they said they probably would. That's why I said that for now, rather than table this, right. 
if the manager can follow up on that and get acquiescence. More assurance yes. Yes. Maybe something in writing. Well, but, that's what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah. You know, I I hope the chairman gives the clerk the draft motion, but I my will. intent would be is to hold the permit approval until I get that assurance back in writing. And then I have one other question. I wasn't sure I understood what their explanation was as to why they had to move the poles. It was something about the location, but was it the, they didn't like the, the locate the geographic well, location? Well, interestingly, there some they're leaving the pole. Them. They're leaving the poles where they are. What they propose to do is put what they call two stub poles across the street, which are 11 feet high, and they will be used to help support the poles on the easterly side. Of Shore Road, so there'll actually, so there'll two actually be poles. yes, there'll actually be four poles, two on each side of the street, with uh, yes, a, a, over the road. Yes, and there are numerous areas where there are wires over the road. I did, as I drove down today, try to assure myself that it was nothing out of the ordinary, but it is two new pole locations mm -hmm. in a place that very likely could be part of the footpath, and that was my concern. We allow them to put the poles up this year and then say next year or five years from now, we want to have a footpath. They would say to us, well, you have to pay right. for the pole relocation, and that was what they assured me they thought they could take care of. So, And before we vote on it, could you just read your motion one more time? My motion would be um, to move to approve the Verizon request provided first that the manager confirms that these poles are located north of the pond outlet mm -hmm. because it's not clear from the information they gave us um, and provided second that if the poles need to be relocated because of the future shore roads path that Verizon its successors in interest Fairpoint and CMP will pay for the relocation. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? 7 0. That's a vote. Okay, now we are at item 38, which is the communication from the school board, um, in which the school board voted 6 1 <coughs> to conditionally support bleachers at Hannaford Field. And I I think that most of you are here for that item. Um, I'd like to suggest that um, as a way to go forward as a matter of procedure, that what we will do is allow anyone who wishes to speak to speak now, and then the council will have a motion, and then the council will have its discussion. But we would like to hear from any of you who have come. If you would like to speak, I'd like to ask you to come up to the podium. Um, it is best if you can kind of line up so that we can be, um, you know, keep things moving. Um, but if you line up and state your name and your address, and um, love to hear from you. So, is there anyone here who would like to speak to the bleachers? Greetings, everyone. I am. Ted Foden, and I live at 23 Ivy Road in the Oakhurst section, and I would just uh, ask, that, uh, we'd be very grateful if you would seriously consider this proposal. Uh, a, a lot of hard work has gone into that uh, Hannaford Field facility, and we love it, and we would just be grateful if you would consider uh, uh, giving us the nod for funding the, that, that share of it. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> I'm uh, Mike Ott. I'm a senior uh, over at the high school. I live on 15 Rockcrest. I uh, just wanted to take a couple moments here tonight. Um, just basically say people have stood here before me and asked for a lot of things, a lot of special interest groups, uh, a lot of specific things like cross-country trails, high school auditoriums. Uh, Major bleachers could fall in that category as well, but there's a whole community here tonight here to support that. I think that's... Um, a special thing that everybody here, not only athletes, but also teachers, residents, senior citizens, art students, there's a lot of different people that would like to see this happen. One of the one-liners I was brought up on is 
If you're going to do a job, do it right. The Kids Turf Committee started this job with a vision. They envisioned that turf field and the light shined on as their capers took the field. And they envisioned watching from their seats. This was never about all those athletes taking this field. It was about those people you can imagine filling those 1,400 seats. And while we've heard it all before, Kids Turf wants to build a place central to the community where everyone can gather, blah, blah, blah. If you've been to that Mountain Valley game of football, or you've followed the girls' soccer season, or you've seen that field hockey game that went in double overtime, you've seen it already coming together. Um, but it's not going to be complete without this. And I think, uh, I mean, the efforts in this project have ranged from door to door collections to the football team did a lift a thon. And, um, they've worked with Hannaford, obviously, put a lot of funds together. The town has yet to take a strong hold in this project. And I see this not necessarily as a burden or an undertaking for the town, but really as an opportunity to get their hands in and help finish this special project. Hi, I'm Jeff Shedd. I'm the high school principal. I also happen to be a resident of Cape Elizabeth. I live at 6 Linwood Street. Yes. Um, and I want to reflect a little bit, first of all, about the fact that um, um, in my growing up at, in a high school, um, I really never had the privilege to participate in um, the events that actually took place on the field, except that about 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday mornings in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, where I grew up, uh, the band the people, the people in the marching band, of whom I was one, um, got together at 6 o'clock and we sort of played one another in a mock football game. Um, there was nobody cheering. There were some injuries that happened, including my brother who lost a couple of teeth. Um, but it was, it was quite an exciting event, but there was absolutely nobody uh, watching us from the bleachers. But, it was, but um, at Saturday afternoon, when it came time, um, I proudly sort of sat in the bleachers, surrounded by members of my community, the students, uh, older people, parents, and, and that sort of thing. And it was a memorable part of the school experience, as, is, as it is for any athletic team to participate, to represent their high school, cheered on by supporters uh, in their community. And in my mind, it is as much a part of the school experience, and in fact, in some ways, a more important part of the school experience than some of the things that we do in our classrooms. Um, and certainly a more cost-efficient thing than some of the things we do in our classrooms as well, because we forget a lot of the details about what happens in classes. And I am teaching now and have been for, for many, many years. Um, and I can readily admit that a lot of the things that I teach, kids are going to forget. But they're going to have a lot of memories that relate directly back to the things that we put in our school mission that we're all about, which is developing teamwork, um, treating others the way we want them to be treated, uh, honoring diversity, and those sorts of things. Um, I could ne never have stood up in front of a town council the way Mike Ott did um, to sort of talk about this. But I do want to correct one thing that he said, because this project, as I see it, the effort to get bleachers onto the field is not a result of, and I think there's some confusion about, it is not a result of the fact that the field is now a turf field. Um, in fact, um, the original vision of that field, I was a part of the original high school renovation committee that came up with the idea of having not a, not a turf field, it became a turf field, thank, thankfully due to the efforts of lots and lots of people who donated lots and lots of time and money, but the original idea was to have a a natural grass field that would be used for our athletes. The original vision actually, the reason we look there is because it's a beautiful setting um, and because our fields are pressed, are squeezed because of the many wonderful athletic programs that our school department with the support of the town council has been able to provide. Um, but it really wasn't designed, it, wasn't, it didn't turn on having a turf field. And the other reason we looked at that backfield is because we investigated the cost of lighting the, the, what was then the varsity soccer field, and the, because of the hill that was there, the height of the poles that would have to uh, be built in order for lights eventually to go on that field was, were prohibitively cost expensive. It, would be, it was going to be considerably less expensive to have lights on the back field because lights were always a part of the original vision, as was bleachers. Um, and unfortunately, due to some cost constraints, the bleachers and the lights were moved out of, this, out of the project 
The lights came, came by virtue of a gift from the community, um, supported by the town council and supported by the school board. Um, artificial turf has been put down there as well, which has been a wonderful gift as well. But I would say that this request to get bleachers is not really a direct result of the fact that it's at net at artificial turf field. It stemmed from the fact that it's an additional field. The original vision was to have lights. Um, and one of the things that I noticed, for those of you who have been um, at events uh, on that field, is because of the lack of bleachers, what happens is the cohesiveness uh, of the community around soccer games and football games and lacrosse games and field hockey games is considerably diminished because what happens is people are sort of spread out all over the place in a sort of amoeba-like fashion. Um, and it's not like what happens at other fields where members of the community of different ages and things like that sit in one area. And I think that the fact that there are no bleachers considerably diminishes um, the impact, the positive impact that the field, regardless of whether it's artificial turf or natural turf, has had for the high school. Um, and the lights have come free of charge. At some point it would be wonderful to have the concession stand as well, which I think is also a, a nice part of it. But I think it is time to put bleachers in. And I will tell you my original sense was that maybe we could get away with smaller set of bleachers, but seeing the number of students who are there, not just for football games, but for other games as well, um, I think it's better to do it right. Um, and, and I think there's a wonderful opportunity to do it now. Uh, to supplement the other wonderful things we have at that facility, and to me it is, a, it is an educational step in the right direction. Um, so that would be my pitch for the town council. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I got a couple of you guys to hold that up. That's a picture of the first Mountain Valley game in well, between three and 4,000 people standing along around the field. Let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Bill Homa. You want to show it to us? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I live at Four Rock Press Drive in Cape Elizabeth. I'm, uh, I work... You guys want to move to the side? Or... Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a senior vice president at Hannaford, and I was the guy that discovered that Hanford was the Hanford Brothers Field Farm was on that site back starting in 1823 and I presented that fact to Hanford and persuaded Hanford to donate some money to get this project started. Um, unfortunately now every high school in New England wants a, a turf field from Hanford, but there's only one place in, in New England that the original Hanford Brothers farmed. Uh, I'm here not representing Hannaford, but as a private citizen, I, I feel some obligation with this project because my company's name is on the field and I've spent a lot of time making the field as, as, as good a product as we could. And I think we've got the finest athletic facility of any, of any school or college in the state, just the field. We have the worst facilities of any school in the state outside of the field. We don't have bathrooms, we don't have a concession stand, we don't have bleachers. It's kind of a mess when it rains. So I'm here today to try to persuade you to finish the project, put around what's a wonderful field, put around the facilities that would kind of put an end cap on the whole project and uh, make us all proud to, uh, to be able to use that field in the, in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I'm Ben Raymond. I live at 44 Brentwood Road. I coach soccer, swimming, and lacrosse, and I teach at the high school. Uh, I would agree with Mr. Homa, and I've also coached at the college level and seen all the different fields around the state, um, seen way too many fields around the state, and we definitely have the best field of any, any college or high school um, in the state of Maine, which is a great thing to say. I mean, we, used to, we played lacrosse on probably the worst field in the entire state for years and years and years. And it hasn't really mattered an awful lot to the kids. They're just happy to get out there and play. 
And what Mike did earlier today is just an example of the passion that these kids bring to everything that they do. And seeing how passionate he is about these uh, bleachers and kind of leaving the school uh, with something that um, they've had an impact on doing, it's great to see. Um, the bleachers will add a uh, new dimension to our athletics facilities. Hopefully we'll get even more people out there, people who don't necessarily come to games. I know my grandmother would love to come to a lot of games, but she doesn't want to come and stand out in the cold for an awful long time. She wouldn't, wouldn't mind sitting, but she's not going to come and stand around. She's only 95, so we've got a little <laughs> bit of time. Um, but we would definitely appreciate... Um, the help of the town council in this project and um, I think it's a great thing for the entire community of Cape Elizabeth and its students and uh, athletes and everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Good evening to all of you. I'm uh, Dr. Sheila Panette. I'm a resident of this community, 9 Granite Ridge Road, and I have five children in this school system and I'm also a physician in this community as well as I sit on both the varsity football board and the community um, for the youth football. Um, as you know, or you probably have seen, I'm a big volunteer in this community. I have a lot to do, but I spend a lot of time trying to help raise money and to try to support the youth in our community, which as you can see, there's not half the community here, but a lot of people who feel very strongly about these bleachers. Um, I'm here to help ask you to help support us. Um, it's very hard for residents of Cape Elizabeth. We uh, get nickel and dime for everything that we do. We're a lot of professional people who stand before you each and every day trying to raise our children, teach them the right things, teach them to give of themselves to be better people. We um, try very hard to make sure they get a good education, and we're all proud of that. But the parents in this community work so hard, and every two minutes we turn around, we're having to give money. And I will tell you, look once again at that photo. I think that's wonderful that you brought it here tonight because I stood amongst that crowd. And um, the problem I was faced with that night was there was elderly women who had no chairs to sit in. I saw, as you know, the apparel. And I was way in the back there. And um, there were little children who were cold, and they couldn't see because of the crowd. So as you see, there's poor visibility for the young and the old. And this community is a community that thrives on all of us being together, working together, and enjoying things. And I want it to be a community that welcomes everybody. And even many, many Mountain Valley people, when they arrived on the scene, they came to me and said to me, where are your bleachers? Cape Elizabeth can afford anything. You can't afford bleachers. I don't think we should be perceived like that. I think we should be a welcoming community as we are, and as we are proud to be. And I ask your support. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. My name is uh, Jimmy Bump, 6 Woodcrest Road. Um, I am actually on the football team, and playing in front of that crowd was unbelievable. It was, uh, it was an experience like none other. To get that crowd condensed all into one certain area would be, it'd be unreal. That's a huge crowd, but it was spread out over the entire field, so it looked a little smaller. Um, so I just wanted to come show my support tonight, and uh, thank you guys for listening, and uh, thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. I promised myself I wasn't going to speak tonight, but here I am. Um, <laughs> the other Michael Ott. The other, I'm sorry, I should say. I'm, my name is Michael Ott, and I live on uh, Rockcrest Drive in Cape. And I just want to start by saying that working on this project has been such a wonderful experience for me. And it's been so gratifying and so rewarding for me individually. And it's really because I go to those games. And I go to the games that my kids aren't even playing in. And I see those faces, young, old, in between, big smiles on their, on their faces, and they're so happy to be there. And I just want to complete this. And, and the reason we've taken this path is really very simple. And we want to get the job done, A. And we think that a 50-50 partnership is a reasonable way to do that. And the other reason that we're here is that our donors, 
And I talk to a lot of these people all the time. And we have 687 different donors in this project. Our donors have demanded of me, demanded that we take this path. They have demanded that they really desire the town to jump in and help out with this project. So I am not here speaking up for myself. I'm speaking on behalf of the 687 people that made this, this uh, reality. And they'd really love to see the town council step up and, uh, and make Cape an even better place to live than it already is. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Good evening. My name is Peter Michaud. I live at 28 Old Fork Road. And I wasn't planning to speak tonight either. Uh, unlike the people who have spoken before me, I'm going to speak in terms of self-interest, my own personal self-interest. My wife Susan and I moved here 20 years ago with a 13-month-old daughter. That daughter has gone through the Cape Elizabeth school system. She did not play any sports. She was followed a couple of years later by our son who's been a lacrosse player and will be playing on the turf field this spring. He'll never play in front of the bleachers, but he will play on the turf field thanks to the efforts of a large number of people in this community. But I was thinking about the project this afternoon and it struck me that probably not too long from now we'll be moving out of our four bedroom house into something that's more suitable for empty nesters and it may not be in this community. At that time, we're going to want to sell our house, obviously. What's going to be important to us then, financially, is property value. And I think back to when we moved here 20 years ago. We moved to Cape Elizabeth primarily for the schools. We had heard about the school system. We'd heard about the quality of the schools. And what we heard has been borne out. Our kids have had a wonderful education here. When people come to look at the community to consider moving here, we have to ask ourselves, are they going to want to move here? Are they going to want to move to Yarmouth? Are they going to want to move to Falmouth? They're going to look at the facilities, among other things, and base their decisions in part on what they see. And what they will see right now is a beautiful field with, well, at the end of this soccer season, I'm willing to bet a very muddy bank. I'd much rather have them see a beautiful field with a beautiful set of bleachers, something that really impresses them and makes them want to live here, as we did. So I urge the council to support this $150,000 uh, item and help us build the bleachers. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Get uh, Jeff Bump, Woody Crest Road. Um, I can't think why anybody would be against doing this. Uh, certainly nobody to my left is, and I don't think anybody up here is really against doing it. Uh, we had citizens in our community go out and raise, I don't know the number, $600,000, $500,000. And now we're asking for half for the bleachers, and I, I can't see how that's unreasonable at all. Uh, Cape residents have always volunteered their time, their money, their labor. And uh, we're not going to have anybody here come up and speak against it. So why don't we just make a motion to approve it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's close it and vote on it. Let's do it. Let's get it done. Well, once Thank we you. make a motion, Jeff, we can't hear so from the rest of you. So we want to make sure we've I understand. heard from all of you. Done? Done. Martha? Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, I'm Martha Palmer. I live at 7 Pilot Point Road. I wasn't planning to speak tonight either, but the first thing I want to say is I love this town. Um, like many of you, um, 
lived here for uh, 20, over 20 years now. It's a great place to live. Um, sadly and happily, my youngest daughter will graduate, I hope, um, in June. Over the course of time, I, had a, I used to be a community organizer, and I jumped in with both feet in Cape. I'd been involved with the soccer boosters, the swim boosters, um, the Seaf Board, my neighborhood organization. Um, lot, lots of different efforts over the years. I, you've seen me up here before in front of you. What I love about this town are the crowds that come. Everybody gets involved in everything. And I remember a very small group that met at my house a long time ago to talk about putting lights on the field behind the high school for the soccer players. And a few people stood up and said, well, it wouldn't be fair for it just to be the soccer players. Let's make a field for everybody because that would be fair, which is great. And then you say, well, why is this just for athletes? This is for the town. This is a place where everyone can come and gather. It's true. I mean, everybody goes to the field. Uh, the way I see this is that it, the reasons I love Cape or the reasons I'm here now is that everybody gets involved in everything, everybody of all ages. The kids speak, the parents speak. I go to my neighbors and I say, you know, could you give me $100 for a turf field for our kids? They're retired. Um, they say, sure, that sounds like a great thing. Can I come to the games? Sure, you can. So the momentum that we get from the energy in this town is, is the great thing about living here and the fact that we all join together for not only our kids but for every population that comes before us. I think, actually, that the momentum you've had with this group has been terrific. We've raised a lot of money for the lights, for the field. We've done a lot for the kids already. I hope the town will join us in this momentum, pick up on it, and make this happen, and this group will make the next effort happen for the town as well. The energy is worth your efforts, as it has been for us. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else? Uh, good evening, John Thibodeau, 21 Salisbury Lane. Um, I think everybody tonight has um, covered most of the bases. The one thing I guess I'd just like to point out is, and that picture does a great job, I think, visualizing it for people. Um, Hannaford Field is one of the few places where you get that number of people of our community in one location at one time. Um, you know, we all go to our kids' um, concerts and other athletic events and what have you, but, you know, I was at that Mountain Valley game as well last year, and uh, I'd never seen so many people from Cape Elizabeth in one place in the 10 years that I've lived here. And I think it's important to point out that when we get together as a community, we do a lot of networking. We talk about our jobs, um, new jobs, old jobs, um, we talk about um, politics, who's running for council, who's running, are there any ZBA openings, things of that nature. We talk about where our kids are going to school. Um, you know, we talk about a lot of different stuff. And, and there's a benefit to that, to the town. And um, sometimes that gets lost And I think, talking about are we supporting one, one team or another team or what have you. Um, that's a, that's a community, um, that's, that's a place where, as a community, that we go um, to talk with one another. And it's one of the few places we have to do that as a community. Um, and the other thing, I guess, as I was sitting there thinking about this, I don't know if this has come up at all and things that um, maybe Jeff and the administration talk about, but, you know, could we have our graduation there? Um, for example, if the bleachers are in there. Could we have school assemblies there? There are a lot of things beyond football games and field hockey games and soccer games that could be done with that field if you have some, some decent facilities. Um, so I would just ask the town council to uh, support this initiative. Um, I do. Um, 
our family does and obviously our community does. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Hello, Bob Danielson, 14 Reef Road, Elizabeth. Um, I've come to approach this from a different tact. Um, I don't think anybody's opposed to bleachers. They're opposed to spending town money on the cost of bleachers. Uh, as most people know, I don't like spending taxpayers' money. Um, I don't like other people spending my tax money. But in the 12 years I've been here, I've been very proud of the fact that this town supports its schools. This school, the schools in Cape Elizabeth are the best in the state of Maine. I can say that professionally and personally. And this particular field, and I've heard it before, I don't think I heard it tonight, is an outdoor classroom. There are more things learned on that field than most classrooms in the school. And to follow up on what John said, there's a tremendous amount of community spirit in that field, and I think it's half done. I think the council owes it to the town to say this is a school project, and that this project will be completed, and that those bleachers are part of that. It's like having a classroom without desks. Let's just finish this. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Jillian Smith, 26 Manta Street. Um, I just want to come from the female athlete standpoint. Um, we don't always, we don't always have the biggest fans or the biggest group of fans at our games. And I know with the bleachers, all those fans that we do get can sit in one section and be together, and it would be a lot louder and a lot more, I don't know, a lot more supportive for us as a female athlete. Um, I'd also like to share another story. Um, at the end of this fall, I actually had knee surgery and I was on crutches for quite a long time. And um, I still wanted to be a part of the community and be able to go to the games and be there for other athletes in our school. And the only way I could go was if I got a seat on the, on the turf field and was able, I talked to Keith Weatherby and that was the only way because I wouldn't be able to see over the bleachers. And I actually had to sit on the field in a chair and watch the game. And I know if the bleachers were there that I wouldn't have had to gone through the whole hassle of getting um, a seat on the field and I would have just been able to sit in the bleachers and I know that it, I just loved being there and I know that that was the only way I would have been there and with these bleachers I think that it would allow more people to come of any ability and it would just be wonderful so I hope you support this. Thank you. Thank you Jillian. Hi, I'm Kelly Finney, and um, I live on 30 Valley Road in Cape Elizabeth. I am also, um, I also work for community services, and um, the overall tone that I'm hearing is how it brings the community together, how more than just our football team, our lacrosse team, our field hockey teams use the field, but um, our youth programs also this fall. We're also included in that program, and the children um, from flag football, uh, our youth, all of our youth field hockey, our youth soccer, all of our levels, all the way up through from preschool to sixth grade, got to play on the turf field, and that was an incredible, you know, they were beaming, that was, that brought incredible joy to them. The um, parents, however, <laughs> found it difficult as uh, things are not allowed on the turf field um, for various reasons. Uh, you know, they had to stand outside of the fence and were kind of confused as to where to go. So I think um, having the bleachers that would also, you know, help bring, like several others have said, the crowds together so that they, you know, can be combined and joined in cheering and whatnot. Um, I think that having this field for, like we said, all levels. I heard others mention possibly having graduations there. I think there's a lot, you know, to be said for it being used in many cases other than just even high school sports as a gathering area. So on behalf of some of our programs at community services that we provide, it would be a wonderful thing to add to our town. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly.
Anyone else? Going once, twice. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to the council now. And I'd like to get a motion so we call. I, I will make a motion that the town council approve the addition of the bleachers to Hannaford Field. Per the written proposal and drawing submitted by the Hannaford Field Committee by Gallivan Brothers, up to 50% of the estimated cost, but not more than $150,000, shall be provided by the town of Cape Elizabeth upon the receipt of privately matched funds. No municipal funds may ex be expended and no contract shall be signed for construction until the town is in receipt of the matching funds to cover the balance of the full estimated cost of the project, which is $315,000. The town shall share the town share of $150,000 shall be added to the 2008 bond issue approved last year and the town manager shall contact the bond council to prepare an amended bond resolution to be review, reviewed at the March regular town council meeting. The town share shall be, shall be amortized in its municipal budget over a 20-year period. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Okay, David? Um, I will support the motion. Um, it's, there are lots of aspects of this that I think are worth commenting on. Um, I, like uh, our high school principal, Jeff Shett, was on the high school uh, renovation committee, and I remember Michael Ott and Graham Smith coming in and making a presentation to us at that time, floating the idea for the first time of a turf field. Um, when we were, when part of the renovation funds were simply focused on rebuilding the grass field that's behind the high school. And they mentioned the possibility of the cost being, I think the number that was mentioned at the time was as much as $250,000 and everybody gasped and thought that, that was likely an improbable amount of money to be able to be raised. And here we are now, 800 and 30 some thousand dollars later and it seems to well what we have I think is probably the the most impressive job of volunteer fundraising that this town has ever seen with uh, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation coming in a very close second but what the turf field the, the kids turf group has done is uh, just seems to be heroic from a fundraising standpoint. But listening to what everybody has to say, I mean, what I, the way I view this as a town amenity, and I'm not looking at it from a town gathering standpoint or young and old or any of that, although all of those statements I'm sure are true, but we wouldn't dream of having a gymnasium without bleachers. We wouldn't have we wouldn't even think about having a basketball game and asking people to come and stand on the sidelines or sit on the gym floor. And I don't think that what we're looking at for the turf field and the bleachers is materially different than that at all. Um, we wouldn't dream of having um, a high school play and asking people to come into an auditorium without seating and asking people to stand or to, to sit on the floor. And I don't think that what we have here with the turf field and a lack of bleachers is materially different than that either. Um, so I support the concept and when you look at the total costs and I thank the town manager for the uh, financial information that was provided with our packets, even after the cost of the 20 year bond and the um, the kids turf donation of the additional funds required to complete the bleachers the, uh, the town's share of a total project cost of 1.275 million dollars uh, will be 23 percent so in other words for every dollar that the town puts in 
there will have been approximately five dollars matched for every dollar of the town. And that seems to me to be an outstanding return um, for the town on any kind of a matching funds project. And if we were putting money up for a federal matching or a state matching grants program of any kind to fund a capital project, uh, we would consider that to be a great return. So I support the motion and uh, we'll be voting in favor of it. Thank you. Again? Well, my concern tonight is, I agree with David, that it's a wonderful project. Um, my concern tonight is not the merits of the project as to whether we should or should not indebt the taxpayers for a $150,000 contribution to the bleachers project. Um, I think everyone in this room agrees that Hannaford Field and um, that facility is a great, it's a fantastic facility, it's been a wonderful asset for the community so far. Our community has experienced this in the first year of operation and I anticipate it will continue to be a great facility. Um, as a contributor myself to the Kids Turf campaign, I'm happy to see how well the project has turned out. It's been volunteer led and financed and it's been great. And the fundraisers, and the donors and the citizens who have worked on this project deserve a lot of credit and they definitely deserve our thanks. I think it's, it's been an outstanding example of how generous our community can be. So my concern is not about the merits of the project, uh, of the bleachers proposal. Rather, it is timing that is my concern. In my view, deciding tonight on this issue is not fiscally prudent practice. And on the contrary, I think it would be bad public policy to decide on it now before we have accurate pictures of either the municipal or the school budgets. I think we should postpone our decision on this matter until it can be included in the usual budget process starting next month. My reasons are as follows. First, during the budget process, we review all of the town's programs and projects so that we can prioritize them and figure out their relative importance and costs and benefits. Taking one project and deciding on it without considering the rest of the budget environment, I think is imprudent. We have more than $12 million worth of needs for other already identified but not yet budgeted for capital improvements for road safety, Fort Williams, Thomas Memorial Library, open space, and so on, coming up in the near future. And I have a list here I can share with the council, but basically we're talking road safety, the town center intersection, the bond that we approved um, last year to be done this spring. Um, that bond already includes only $100,000 for the local match for the inter intersection, but the um, Main Department of Transportation estimate for that project is now $880,000, and they're going to pay only $350,000, which is 80% of the initial estimate. That leaves us short. Um, our local share would be $530,000, and we've only planned the funding for 100,000 of it. That's one thing. The Shore Road off-road path, um, we have, which is in the comp plan, as something we should be thinking about has $2.1 million estimated cost, and the Shore Road Committee is working on plans for that now. I don't mean specific plans, but of what to do. Um, other road safety projects in the comp plan and with dollar numbers attached to them are Shore Road, Fort Williams sidewalks, Fowler Road sidewalks, Mitchell Road shoulders, and so on. Fort Williams Park, they have bleachers over there. Too, and it's going to cost $500,000 to repair them. Um, the battery preservation, batteries preservation that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has talked to us about, we don't even have a price tag on that. Um, the Goddard Mansion, just to restore it as a ruin, would be $450,000. Restrooms, which I know some people are proponents of, $100,000 estimate back in 1995. I'm sure it would be a lot more than that now. Thomas Memorial Library, I'm on the building committee for that one, and after um, starting work on that, we're, we're seeing that's going to be 1.2 to $3 million. The Land Trust, 
is um, requesting to partner with us to increase open space acreage in the community. That's in the comp plan. I don't know what that would cost, but it's money. Um, Alternative Energy Committee. They're psyched about, or we've heard some people at least, psyched about putting up a windmill at the transfer station. Very cool idea. But it, it costs to Saco $200,000 to put up their windmill. Transfer station has needs. Little League has needs for third field at Lions Field. All these things add up to more than $12 million. Um, and that's not just to talk about the operating expense pressures on the budget. The school budget uh, first draft proposal today is a 13.28% spending increase. That equates to a 16% tax increase. Now, I, I don't want to scare anybody. That's their first draft. I'm sure they'll think about that some more. But that's something to think about. Um, I do agree that people come and, and love, love Cape Elizabeth for the schools. And we have to think about the needs of the schools, too, other than just bleachers. The Cumberland County budget is increasing um, so that we're going to have a 7.88% increase in what we have to pay the county. Fuel oil energy costs are up 28%. The teacher, police, and public works contracts are up this year for negotiation. The demands of the governor's new school consolidation program are going to have costs for our town associated with them. We have all sorts of unfunded mandates. I won't bore you with all those. but. Um, and this is not even to mention the, the recession or the economic weakness that we all know about where uh, the subprime mortgage issues and the credit markets are having problems and so on and so on. <coughs> and our LD1 spending limit is two point, the, the uh, income growth factor is 2.24%. So these, I mention these, you know, not, not to be a pain in the butt, but uh, to make us realize that I, I think that we should consider all of the projects that we have to think about for the future, weigh their relative merits, and rather than just picking out one for special treatment in an early decision. That's my first reason, and my other ones won't be so long-winded. <laughs> Secondly, I think we have very, we as a council have very little hard data on what exactly is planned for the ble bleacher project. The school board motion mentions a written proposal and drawings from the Gallivan Company, but I haven't seen any of those, and I don't think most of us have, at least. I'm hesitant to make an investment of so much money tonight, given that I've heard many conflicting accounts of how big, how many seats, exactly where, what's included, of the magnitude of the bleacher project. I would certainly not commit our citizens' money to a project that I couldn't even accurately describe to them. We have demanded, we the council have demanded more hard information on other projects like dugouts, Nordic trails over at Gullcrest, and other municipal facilities before we made um, committed money to them. We need more now so that more information now so we can make informed decisions. And third and last, I have grave concerns about giving special treatment to one interest or one group in town by going outside our usual practices. Citizens from the Nordic Ski Group, the Diamond Club's Dugouts Project, the Land Trust, Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, Thomas Memorial Library Foundation, and SEAF have all worked really hard and well to raise money privately to fund town projects, projects for the public good. Before we start making commitments to give taxpayer money to one group for one project, I think we should look carefully at all the requests and projects like we do each year for charitable organizations that ask us for money during budget season. By considering all the significant budget proposals at the same time, we ensure a fair process and equal opportunity for all concerned. Giving special treatment to one group to the possible financial detriment of all others is neither fair nor good public policy, in my opinion. I hope that the council would share this concern for a fair and open process. We are all <coughs> of the town's resources and have a duty to make well-informed and prudent decisions in the best interests of our citizens. For those three reasons, I would like to amend the motion to say that we will indeed decide on the merits of the 150000 contribution to the Bleachers Project, but we will do, would do so during the regular budget process starting next month. 
As that process progresses, we'll have much more relevant budget information than we do now. We haven't seen the municipal or school budgets. And we'll have a chance to weigh all the merits of all the programs and projects brought forth by the manager, the school board, and other groups in town. The citizens will have a chance to share with us their priorities among everything proposed. Deciding then with more information and public input would be better fiscal practice and would, I think, make for much better public policy. Thank you. And so I'll make that are you making that a motion now? Yes, to a motion to amend Ms. Paul's motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. It, that is a debatable motion. Yeah. So we will continue the debate on the amendment. It's the debate on the amendment. Okay. And I guess I would just like to respond. And I can repeat back the motion if anybody wants to hear so, it. Is that a friendly amendment? No, it's not a friendly amendment, but it trumps. So I don't have to respond to it. We did not get to say what we wanted on right. the original issue. That's right. But under Robert's Rules of Orders, a motion to refer to the Finance Committee trumps a motion on the merits. However, if you oppose that motion, you can oppose that motion and then Paul's motion remains How do we on the board. Then, then you you would vote Paul's against motion. the motion. So do we have a vote? We will have a vote. I would like to speak to... You have a vote on the... You, so you will have a vote. Amendment. And I would like to speak to your um, motion. Um, and I want to speak... I have other things to say about the merits of the project, which I will leave. Hopefully we will get back to Paul's motion, but I, I did want to speak on um, the reference to the Finance Committee because um, normally I would be in favor of that. Um, I, t I too have tried very hard to be a prudent steward of town resources and I don't think there's anyone in this room who would uh, say otherwise. I've tried very hard to um, make sure that we spend all our tax dollars. And, Why I want to be clear, I wasn't saying and, that. Anybody. And the best way, I think, normally to do that is to weigh all of the projects together and, and to send them to the Finance Committee. I disagree with that this, on this issue for this reason. This particular project went to the Finance Committee last year. It was debated at length last year. It was one of the manager's priorities. It was included in his bond package. I believe that last year we had the votes to pass this project in the Finance Committee. However, the school board was opposed to the project, and so we did not want to approve the project over the objection of the school board. The school board is now supporting this project since the proposal has already spent time in the Finance Committee last year, and I don't think that the situation has changed in terms of the need for this project. I personally think it is not in order for it to go back to the Finance Committee. So I will be opposing the motion. Jim? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'm profoundly grateful to Mike Ott and the uh, Kids Turf Committee and now the Hannaford Field Committee. Uh, and, and in fact, everyone who's given to the project and who has worked hard to bring Hannaford Field to where it is today, uh, there's no doubt about that it's, it's been a remarkable and continues to be a remarkable effort. It has definitely made our community a better place. There's also no doubt in my mind that bleachers and a concession stand and coach's box are what are needed to make that field uh, live to its potential. There's no question in my mind. And there's no question in my mind that it will happen. And I won't deny that there's a strong emotional tug to having the town step in and help finish off this project here tonight. But I can't vote for it tonight, and, and for many of the reasons that the Congress with Teata uh, mentioned. I understand that there's frustration among the fundraisers. I understand that. You've done an unbelievable job. And I understand the frustration of feeling that the town hasn't participated to the level that, it, that, that you feel it should have. But I, I would just ask you to be patient for a, for a few more weeks. That's all it will take to get the proper information to weigh this, to weigh this uh, item. And uh, there's, there's also another pretty strong lesson in sport, and that's not to give up. 
you don't quit playing at the end of the third quarter. So if you're thinking of walking away now, please hang in there just until we can make a, a reasonable decision. The first concern I have is a matter of principle, and it's, it's been mentioned. Uh, we have a town council finance committee, and I happen to be the chairman of that committee this year. Um, I strongly believe that consideration of any expenditures of this magnitude, whether out of pocket or using borrowed bonded money, need to come before and enjoy the, the debate in the finance committee and in the context of our annual town budget. Be totally fair, I was asked to, to bring this item to the finance committee prior to our uh, scheduled meetings in March, but I didn't think that that was uh, a good idea because we wouldn't have the, the uh, information that we need to have a meaningful debate in committee. But we will have that information in a, few, in a very few weeks. Um, and I, I think it would really be prudent to wait for that information. Affirmative action on this motion tonight demonstrates to me a, a, a circumvention of the Finance Committee and our budget process. And I just plain don't think that's right. You know, if, if the Finance Committee is going to, to, to have its significance grow and shrink, uh, depending on relative to, a, to a, a viewpoint on an item, then why bother having a finance committee? It, it seems pointless. Um, I, I don't happen to think that the finance committee is pointless. I think this has to go before it. My second concern, uh, the issue did come before the finance committee and it was voted down 7-0. Presumably the main reason, as Councillor Lynch uh, said, was that it didn't enjoy the support of the school board. That's true. Tonight we now have evidence that the school board does support the, the uh, project, but it's a conditional mm -hmm. approval. And the condition is the school board would like the town council uh, to assert that, that any positive action on the bleachers will not negatively impact the school department budget. Now any new, and particularly a new non-essential expense that we bring into the budget is going to negatively impact the budget. I can't give the assurance to the school board tonight. I, I will be able to in a few weeks, but I can't give that assurance tonight that the addition of, of funding for bleachers is not going to negatively impact the school budget. I, I just can't do it. I don't think anybody can. My third concern is with the annual budget itself. This has been uh, uh, gone over by, by Councillor Swift Kayada, and I agree with it. Um, and I admit that the proposed bond will add a very small amount of our property tax burden, but at the same time, we could hypothetically wind up at the end of this process having promised bleachers, but having to consider uh, cutting programs, services, and personnel. That's hypothetical, but it makes my point. My point is we don't yet have the information to make that kind of a decision. I don't want to get to the end of this project and look somebody in the eye that I have laid off and said, sorry, but we got our bleachers. It doesn't make sense to me, particularly when this, was, this project was, uh, it was understood by me and was understood by the taxpayers of our community that it was going to be 100% privately funded. I, I'm just not ready to do that tonight. And again, that, that's an important word, tonight. Finally, I sat on this dais a little over a year ago, a candidate's night, and I very publicly told the citizens of this town that I could make tough decisions on spending. <clears throat> There's none tougher than this one, because a lot of my friends are on the opposite side of this issue. But my friends are looking at this issue alone, and I can't. I've got to look at everything. I've got to look at the big picture. So it's tough. But if it means anything to anybody, I'm, I'm delivering on the promise that I made to make tough decisions on spending. And I would like to see this go to the Finance Committee. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I would like to support this, this issue, um, <clears throat> and I think we should do it tonight, and here's why. This strikes me as uh, common sense um, should trump all of the other points people have made. What other project do we have? First of all, there's so many projects, particularly that you listed off, that are new projects starting from scratch that are enormously expensive, and it seems to me a little embarrassing to embark upon these huge projects when all this is is the final finishing touch. No other project that we're talking about has a five to one odds of private citizens paying. The percentage we're putting in here is so minuscule compared to what they've raised and it just seems um, 
like the, the ultimate kicking a gift horse in the mouth. I mean, we, we, they're asking us to put in so little money to generate the final energy to push this project through. They've worked incredibly hard. Everyone's made that point. And I think it's worth distinguishing that this is going to be a bond um, fund. And so it's, although I understand that it weighs on this year's budget considerations, it doesn't weigh as heavily because realistically it wouldn't actually take any money out of this year. And in future years, it would start at 15000 and go down from there. So in a year-to-year -year budget analysis, it's, it's actually a minuscule amount. So um, I personally think it's the best deal I've heard about since I started on the council, and it, it gives something to both um, Union Simple and school that they can share. The whole community can benefit from it, and uh, I just think it's money incredibly well spent. So, and, and I agree with um, Marianne that we vetted this pretty, pretty well last year, and the only um, reservation people had was, I thought, process rather than the money that the school board, that it should be the school board's decision first. So I'm strongly in favor of it, and I intend to vote for it. So you will be voting against Correct. the motion to refer? Correct. Oh. I will be voting against the amendment, and, um, for, and I will be voting for the motion that I made. The, um, the point is, we, we have a wonderful project here. We have about 7% of the uh, population that stepped up and really raised a lot of money. Uh, we've had the help of the town in a, in a variety of ways. I was in favor of this project last year. I'm sorry we didn't get it passed last year. But I think after going through a season, we realized that we really need these bleachers. It's become more evident than it, than it was last year because now, you know, the kids have played the games and the uh, spectators have stood behind the fence. And I think everyone now realizes the bleachers would be a, a real great benefit. I also want to make a point about the um, school budget because I think it's really important that we separate this issue from the school budget. I, I don't see that they're connected. This is town, the town spending money and for what I consider a town project. I've always felt that way. And I think it's important that the school board was involved because it's on school grounds. But it really is a town project for the benefit of the entire town. And the school board was concerned that if we spent the money on the bleachers, somehow we would subtract it from the school budget and it would have an adverse effect on the money they receive for education. I don't, I don't connect the two. It, as far as I'm concerned, it's a town project, it's town money, and we, it's part of the municipal side of the budget. We should not connect it to the school budget. Um, I don't see it as one group versus other groups. I see this as a town project for the entire, for the, for the benefit of the entire community, not just for one group that you know, is proposing it. This is a, the group, the Hanford Field Committee was a town council appointed committee and we asked them to go do a job and get back to us with information. It's a committee that's, that represents the entire community. And finally, on the um, fiscal side, Normally, I would agree with, with the Ann's assessment and Jim's assessment. As, as Mary Ann stated, we're on the same page. The proper place to put most of these items is in the Finance Committee because that's where we make those decisions. But I, but I don't see this project in that manner. And the reason I don't is because it's a job that's incomplete. It's a project that's incomplete. I, my brother was up here a few months ago and when the, we didn't have any snow on the ground. And I took him around town and we went down to see the uh, field. And I said, what do you think? He said, he started looking around. And the first thing out of his mouth was, where are the bleachers? You know, he was, he was amazed that we, we didn't have, he said, the field looks great, but where are the bleachers? And I didn't say anything to prompt that. But that's the reaction people have because we have this first class facility and we have no place to sit. So I think we need to finish the job. And when you look at the cost of the town, $150,000 is the cost plus interest over a 20-year period. The annual cost, the first year cost, would be $14,250, and that cost would go down by $300 per year. I think we need to keep that in mind. It, and when you look at the budget process and when we go through this, $14,000 is meaningful, believe it or not. 
even though we have a $33 million budget, all those pieces of $14,000, $10,000, $20,000, they add up very rapidly. But in the context of this project, I think we need to get the job done, and $14,000 is a good investment, in my opinion. Just for the record, I think the manager had made some correction, and it's 15000 and okay. some change, but just wanted the record to be clear. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? I'm not giving any speeches today. Okay. Well, I guess uh, all in favor of the motion to refer to the Finance Committee? One, two. Opposed? Four, five. Okay, that would be two, five. That's how it's reported, I think. And now we are back to the motion on the merits. Is there further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Oh, David, I'm well, sorry. I'd just like to respond briefly. Um, Councilor Swift Kayata's comments, as always, are <coughs> eloquent and well reasoned. <laughs> And she serves as the, the fiscal conscience of the, He's the council. He's a in, lunging in, down in flames. In many respects. <laughs> um, it, and I just want to comment on the, the one suggestion that perhaps there's more information that the council needs um, on this proposed project. Um, as Councilman McKinney referenced, um, the council did create a or they morphed uh, field committee when we when we renamed the citizen committee as the Hannaford Field Committee, and we appointed representatives from both the school board and from the town council, as well as various sectors of <coughs> citizen representatives. Uh, with uh, Wendy Seltzer as chair, I see Wendy here tonight. Thank Wendy for her service on that. I think it was. It's great of her to do, and she took on perhaps more than she bargained for when she did, but we thank her for it. And the um, Hannaford Field Committee uh, received in substantial detail the proposed plans and drawings for this project as to the length, the height, the, all the dimensions, the engineering behind it. Um, and it was approved by the Hannaford Field Committee by unanimous vote and sent to the school board with a recommendation for approval. Um, the school board in turn looked at it, has approved it not unanimously but by a vote of six to one and has sent it to the town council. And when we created the charge for the Hannaford Field Committee, it was done with the understanding that the council would not take up any issue related to the field without it first being reviewed by the Hannaford Field Committee, which had to make a recommendation for approval and go to the school board for approval before anything came back to us for consideration. Well, we've gone through that process. It's here, and I think here and now is the time to approve it. David, thanks for clearing that up on the record. And I would ask Mike to be, uh, give us a specific rundown of the amounts, just because he did do a new spreadsheet and I want to make sure everyone understands what the numbers are. And before you do, Michael, I would just say I'd like to put into some perspective that um, looking at the overall town and school budget and making some assumptions about what increases there might be in the budget, it is a very, very small part of our budget. And just to the issue of it going to the Finance Committee, because I agree with you two 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, this is the only project I can think of that I have tried, said I don't think should go. But when I look at the leverage power we get and the donor's willingness to raise 110% of what the town is kicking in, and my concern that we will lose that enthusiasm um, if we were to wait another three months. And I weigh that against 15000 a year descending for 20 years. I'm willing to make an exception, but I want to be clear. <laughs> it 
it's a very narrow exception, and I don't want to see a line of other um, folks and groups uh, in future years. So, Michael, if that, yeah. you can just make sure we're clear on the numbers. And I'll be very, very brief. The original amortization schedule I included in the packet had a first year expense of 14250 I asked Joe Katower, our from Boston, Moore's Cabot, our financial advisor, to look at doing an amortization schedule for this project. I had 7,500 each year level principal payments. He changed it to 10,000 the first 10 years and, 10, and 5,000 the second five years, again equal 150. As a result, the first year is 15,425, but instead of an interest cost over the life of the borrowing of 70,875, it would now be 49,300, thereby reducing the estimated cost of principal and interest over the 20 years from 220,875 to 199,300. And the lesson is to try and pay your mortgage off early. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Uh, so for, if there's no further discussion on this item, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? Okay. Five, two. It's approved. We still, we are still in our meeting, so I'd ask you to clear the room or stay quietly. Take a two minute recess while the room is being cleared. We'll Yes. <laughs> oh, we're back on the air. When do we go off the air? We took a two-minute recess to clear the room. Okay. Okay, the next item on our agenda, and I see one member of the public remaining and one <laughs> member of the fourth estate. <laughs> He wants bigger dugouts. <laughs> <laughs> this would be item 39, Fort Williams Park Municipal and School Uses. And as is the case every year, the uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission has advised or recommended that we approve items A through D for the use of uh, Fort Williams Park, and that includes uh, the high school graduation. Um, graduation practice, family fun day, and the um, Engine One Cape Elizabeth Fire Department art show. Is there a motion? Jim? I would move that we, we approve these requests for use of Fort Williams Park. I'd also like to say that uh, I was the first chairman of the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department Engine One Company art show a couple of years ago. And it's good to see that it's still it cranking. continues. Is there a second? second. Discussion? And I have a couple of questions um, on, on two of them that maybe the manager would know about. On the Boy Scout troop. Oh, and that's item 40, oh, two I'm separate sorry. items. So Never mind. hold your question. Any further discussion? All in favor? OK, show that to be 7-0, please. Now, item 40, which is the non-Cape Elizabeth school department or municipal 
uses of Fort that. Williams. And Michael, you may speak to them. And these also have all been recommended by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Just, just quickly, the Little League uh, is, is an annual uh, request. The Boy Scout Troop, uh, that is, is a first time request. Uh, it also requires a permit from the Chief of Police for overnight camping in Cape Elizabeth, and they would have to obtain that as well. Uh, the Arbor Cultural Tree Climbing is fairly self-explanatory. The wireless thing happens there every year. No one ever really seems to notice it. There's a road race, uh, a big one on August 2nd that most people are familiar with. Uh, and the Yacht Club Monhegan Race Observation Point, that's merely they go in there overnight and they monitor the sailboats from a spot right near the lighthouse, and that's been a standard event. There should be an H there as well, if you looked at your material, which is the Portland Symphony Orchestra annual oh, approval. Okay. And the reason that one wasn't initially placed is we wanted to be absolutely sure that the symphony understood that we were going to be rigorous in enforcement of the uh, prohibition against use of alcohol in the park. And uh, I didn't meet with them, but some of the other staffs met with them, and they understand that point clearly, and they'll be working cooperatively with us. The, most of these groups, uh, when I say most, the amateur wireless doesn't. Uh, the, the, the others all have to provide us certificates of insurance as well. Okay. Question? Discussion and again? First of all, sorry. I just Wait, do we have a motion? Together. We don't have a motion on this. Oh, can I have a motion first? Okay, I make a motion that uh, we approve the items A through G as stated. A through H. H. Oh, excuse me. H. G. We've, we've added Symphony. Portland Symphony. the Portland Symphony. I'm sorry. A through H. Thank you. And yes, a second by David. Thanks. Second by David. Thank you. Second. <laughs> I thought I saw your hand up before. <laughs> Is there an echo in here? <laughs> well, I thought if you were willing to make the motion, you'd be willing to second it. I am. Thank you. Uh, and now I have a question. Uh, sorry, I had these all stapled together, so I had them all grouped together. Um, all these, uh, and this is addressed to the town manager, all these groups have, or it will be seen that, that, too, that they have proper insurance. The one I was worrying about most was the Boy Scouts, only because they're going to be overnight and yeah. near the cliffs, and yeah, I'm the, sure they're all very... We, we do not ask the Portland Amateur Wireless field day for certificate no, insurance. It's a I, small group. And I was more we've never concerned asked them for one. about the Boy Scouts since they were staying yeah. overnight and also um, the tree climbing. Yeah, the tree yeah. climbing. Yeah. That yeah. one was yeah. corporation. He, he did say they have a copy of an, an insurance yeah. policy. But the, yeah, the, the Boy Scouts have their insurance the, through the Pine Tree Council. So they have the Boy Scouts of America and it's the, 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 the International Society will be okay. sure we get one from. And the yeah, town of Cape Elizabeth should be a named insured, not exactly. just that they have That's right. insurance That's for themselves. We okay. And then um, on the Boy Scout one, uh, I pre you said they had to get a, a police department permit to, to uh, overnight camping permit. Camp overnight. Is there something they mentioned? Uh, this sounds so goofy, but. They mentioned having a campfire. Yeah. Do they need some sort of fire permit? Is this okay they, with the fire They would department? need a fire permit. There's, there's a permit for their campfire would be uh, needed from the, the fire chief. Yeah, you go into Has the fire, something. well, we don't have, has the acting fire chief weighed in on this? In other words, does he even know about well, this? Having gotten a fire permit myself uh -huh. to burn on the yeah, beach, we have an annual um, bonfire. They actually give it that day based on wind conditions and so. Okay. But the intent is to, that they will have to have a fire permit, right? You, you have to have a permit to have an open fire in Cape Elizabeth, yes. Okay. In the state of Maine. And um, then the old, I had one other question about on the dates with the Boy Scouts um, and the, the, I think it was the, um, the tree climbing. I think that the family, the tree climbers date, rain date, is the same as family fun day, and I just didn't know if yep. there was any concern the, about any overlap it was, or it was conflict. Directly the opposite. The family fun day committee discussed that and said, wouldn't this be a wonderful thing for people to be able to see and watch? Cool. So. Okay. Okay. Those were my questions. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? I'll show that to be 7 0, please. Okay, um, there is one citizen here, so uh, I will mention that 
This is the second time in our agenda where you are welcome to address us to speak to items not on our agenda. See? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rick's so excited, we don't know what to do. Okay, the next item is item 41, um, which is to go into executive session in accordance with one MRSA section 4056A, C, and D to continue the annual personnel evaluation of the town manager to discuss land acquisition disposition issues and to review the status of collective bargaining. And that's a motion. Second. All in favor? 7-0. Um, we will uh, not be taking any action in executive session. Um, but we will hold the executive session in the conference room next door. We will adjourn after that, at which point um, we may have a brief workshop, time permitting, on, well, <laughs> time permitting and council agreeing on um, the council goals. But we will see how long the executive session takes. If, uh, let's see, uh, just for the um, home audience, I'd like to um, just announce that the next town council workshop is scheduled for this Thursday, February 14. The next town council meeting is Monday, March 3rd. Please note that that is a change from our usual regular meeting date. And the finance committee will meet on March 25th, March 26th, April 1st, April 9th. And the April meeting will be on April 14th. So with that, we will adjourn to our executive session. Thank you. The Verizon is in there, but... Um